It is no exaggeration to say that America's progress in many fields of endeavor over the years ahead, in fact, the very survival of our free country, may depend in a large part upon the education we provide for our young people now. National Defense Act of 1958. Sputnik 1 shattered a scientific barrier and caused panic in the United States when it was first launched into orbit. It was the spark that started the space race, giving cause for unprecedented amounts of funding to go into science education. This paved the way for the continuation and advancement for STEM for future generations. But how did this happen? What were the events that led up to this panic or, depending on your point of view, a monumental scientific discovery? The beginning might have been in 1939 to 1945, when World War II was happening. The Germans were making large leaps in space technology when creating missile technology to fight the war. During the war, one of the rockets the Germans managed to make was the V-2 rocket, or Vengeance Weapon 2. It was announced in November 1944 and was the world's first large-scale liquid propellant rocket. It was also the first rocket to make it into space, or past the Kármán line. Its technology showed that it is possible, and many space advancements would not be possible without it, including the R-7, the rocket that took Sputnik into space. At the end of the war, the US and Russia both managed to capture German rockets, including the V-2, and look at how they were built. Then, around 1947, the Cold War started, happening even though the two nations had fought together against the Axis powers. The United States was against the idea of communism, as they felt it challenged their idea of democracy, and this was the start of rivalry and fear between them. This is what caused the U.S. to feel so threatened by the Soviets' Sputnik 1. This has not helped when it seemed that the USSR had technology that the U.S. did not, and the tensions between the U.S. and Russia rose as they fought to have a better economic position. As an effect, this caused the U.S. to feel threatened when they were beaten in an area they were thought to be exceptional in. Ever since the Second World War, the United States and Russia had been looking towards artificial satellites, but the idea never gained traction. That is, until July 1955, when President Eisenhower announced that they would launch an artificial satellite. And a few days later, the Soviets announced that they too would launch an artificial satellite. The space race was on. In the next two years, both the United States and the Soviets refined and perfected their satellites and rockets. The Soviets were originally planning on making a more sophisticated satellite, but because of the time constraints, they settled for a simpler satellite, Sputnik. In the end, the Soviets were victorious. On October 4, 1957, the Soviets successfully launched Sputnik 1 into orbit using an R-7 rocket. Sputnik 1 was a 56 centimeter, 22 inch in diameter, metal sphere with four long antennas. Altogether, Sputnik 1 weighed 83 kilograms or 183 pounds. Sputnik 1 circled the Earth once every hour and 30 minutes at 18,000 miles an hour. Sputnik 1 transmitted radio signals that could be detected by even the most amateur radio setups. People listened in awe as they heard the beeping sounds of Sputnik pass overhead. If you didn't have a radio that could pick up the signals, you could hear them on the news. In one of the first American news reports about the launch of Sputnik, you can hear the beeping sounds of Sputnik while the announcer, Ed Hurley, says, Hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite, one of the great scientific feats of the age. Sputnik 1 circled the Earth for 22 days until its batteries died, but kept circling until early 1958. Sputnik 1 caught the U.S. off guard. What went wrong? How did a nation of backward peasants forge so dramatically ahead of us in the race to space? The first U.S. satellite was planned to be about 10 times smaller than Sputnik was, and the U.S. hadn't even launched it yet. Although Sputnik was fairly harmless and basic, the United States public was worried about more sinister uses for Sputnik. In the same newsreel mentioned earlier, 
Ed Hurley informs us. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Here, an artist's conception of how the feat was accomplished. A three-stage rocket. Number one, the booster in the class of an intercontinental missile. With words like intercontinental missile, three-stage rocket, earth circling, and Russian rocket, it is little surprise that the U.S. public was worried. In the book, Angel of Attack by Mike Gray, it reads, On Friday, October 4, 1957, the Soviets had orbited the world's very first artificial satellite. Anyone who doubted its existence could walk into the backyard just after sunset and see it. You couldn't deny it. The Soviets, thought to be far behind in science and engineering, had beaten the U.S. in the very field that was perceived as the U.S.'s strong suit. By the time the U.S. launched their very first satellite, the Soviets had already launched a dog into space, aboard Sputnik 2. The Soviets continued to siege ahead of the United States, with the first person in space, the first woman in space, and the first spacewalk. In the end, though, the United States were victorious when they put the first human on the moon. As its name suggests, the National Defense Education Act was put in place to increase the United States' advancements in the scientific field and were put in place a little under a year after the Sputnik was launched. The United States were scrambling to catch up with the Soviets and to their dismay were falling short. So they put in place this act. One part of the act states, the Congress hereby finds and declares that the security of the nation requires the fullest development of the mental resources and technical skills of its young men and women. The present emergency demands that additional and more adequate educational opportunities be made available. The defense of this nation depends upon the mastery of modern techniques developed from complex scientific principles. The United States were in a very unpleasant and embarrassing situation and were willing to go any measure to catch up with the Soviets. As this excerpt suggests, the United States were pouring money and resources into the project. During this time, lots of educational programs were put in place along with funding for students that are still in place today. According to the U.S. Senate, in the 1960s, there were 3.6 million students in college, and by the 1970s, there were 7.5 million. This proves that the act had a massive effect and affected the educational system in the U.S. for many years. The short-term effect of Sputnik 1 is a funding increase for the science education and a panic in the U.S. As said in this statement prepared by the National Science Board, Sputnik challenges the nation's determination to strengthen its present scientific position. The board is voicing what many Americans were thinking at the time. This is important because Sputnik 1 is a bold first step to colonization and understanding the other planets and beyond. In the long term, Sputnik 1 also had a large impact on growing science education and space exploration. The evidence that this is impactful is funding for space programs, such as NASA, was approved. The Bureau of Budget ended up approving $250 million for NASA's development. Sputnik also started a cascade of space discoveries and advancements in the U.S. Sputnik 1 was the first satellite in space, but its legacy was so much greater than that. Sputnik 1 was the key factor that started the space race. The space race would continue on and be the reason we put a man on the moon, and the reason we have NASA. Sputnik 1 also greatly impacts the education system in the U.S. Prior to Sputnik, the United States took for granted our science, math, and engineering prestige. But after being thoroughly outdone by the Soviets, we took this field more seriously. This could happen again, where society allows the best to slip behind because there is a lax. So how do you think history could or is repeating itself? Are the best slipping behind because they believe they are the best? Should more innovation be happening today? Do we need another Sputnik?